All right, so we're diving into this whole Libra Office versus Open Office thing. The classic showdown. Right. Everyone wants to know which free office suite reigns supreme. And it's a question we get all the time. So All the time. And we've got a stack of articles here all trying to dissect it. But who has time to wade through all that? Exactly. We want the need to know without the jargon overload. We're going to break it down for you, make it crystal clear. So first up, this article jumps right into the looks, the aesthetics. Ah, first impressions. They do matter. They do. And they say LibreOffice, it's got that sharper, more modern vibe. Like, it wants to be that Microsoft Office you're used to. Trying to give you that familiar feel, which some people, they actually want that, right? Absolutely. It makes the transition easier. But then they describe OpenOffice as minimalistic. Minimalistic. Mm -hmm. That's one way to put it. Sounds like they're trying to be polite about it being a little... You know, a little dated, perhaps. Yeah, maybe. But hey, looks aren't everything. It's what's under the hood that counts, right? Preach. Functionality over fashion, always. 100%. Though this article mentions something about Open Office having a side deck. Honestly, never heard of it. Oh, yeah, the side deck. That's kind of Open Office's thing. Think of it like um, it's a sidebar, gives you quick access to different tools and features. Like, what kind of tools are we talking about? Templates, for one styles, even images from your gallery. Handy if you're the type who likes things, you know, right there at your fingertips. Ah, I see. Like having your digital toolbox right there. But you know what makes me nervous? That whole compatibility issue. I remember this one time I was trying to open a client's report and it was in that newer word format Uh and my old office suite, it just couldn't handle it. Panic mode, Full on. The stuff of nightmares. It is. And that's where this whole compatibility thing is huge EE, right? Absolutely. And the article really hammers home LibreOffice's ability to work with a wider range of file types, including those newer Microsoft Office formats. Which is crucial for most people. Let's be real. It's the name of the game. No one wants to be stuck in the past, unable to open a document. Exactly. Okay, but features, that's got to be important too, right? Everyone wants the bells and whistles. Of course, but they have to be the right bells and whistles. Touche. And one thing the article points out, LibreOffice's writer, it's got a seriously good mail merge feature. Okay, now you're talking my language. And think about it. When was the last time you had to send personalized emails to a bunch of people? Mm. Oh, don't even get me started. My family reunion last year, it was spreadsheets and copy-pasting galore. A recipe for disaster. Tell me about it. But with LibreOffice's mail merge... You could have automated that whole thing. Personalized invites, boom, set with a few clicks. Sounds like magic. Great, you've sold me on mail merge, but I'm also someone who has to tinker, you know, customize things to fit how I work. What about that? They both offer some level of customization, but again, LibreOffice, it seems to edge out OpenOffice here too. Really? How so? Well, get this, they even allow integration with other open source tools like GIMP and Inkscape. Wait, hold on. Are you saying I could potentially create a graphic in, say, GIMP and then just seamlessly drop it into a LibreOffice document? You got it. That's next level. It hints at this whole philosophy of interconnectivity, of open collaboration that LibreOffice seems to embrace. Okay, that is interesting. Definitely something to consider. But let's talk about keeping all this work safe, because what good are all these fancy features if your documents are vulnerable to every digital gremlin out there? Data security. It's non-negotiable these days. Absolutely not. And the article does mention both suites offer decent security. Okay, good to know. But LibreOffice, they seem to be taking it up a notch. Like they're going above and beyond. Exactly. Stronger encryption digital signatures, things like that. Okay, so they're both free. They've got features, but let's be real. Sometimes you need a helping hand. What about community support? That's where the open source world really shines. Both LibreOffice and OpenOffice, they've got these dedicated communities, forums, tons of tutorials out there. So it's more about finding where you feel most at home, I guess, like which community speaks your language. Precisely. Find your people. Love it. But we're getting ahead of ourselves. We haven't even talked about the elephant in the room yet. Microsoft Office compatibility. It's the 800-pound gorilla in the room. You can't escape it. Nope. It's the industry standard for a reason. Even if you're all about that free software life, you got to play nice with Microsoft. You've got to be able to at least open, edit, save, you know, the That's basics. That's the bare minimum. And it sounds like both LibreOffice and OpenOffice can handle that. But, and this is a big but. A big but. LibreOffice, they say it's way better at preserving formatting. Oh, yeah. That is huge E-E. QGE. I mean, that's the difference between a usable document and a total disaster. Talk about a nightmare. Spending hours on a document, getting all the fonts and layouts just right. And then 
boom, you open it in someone else's word and it's like a ransom note. Exactly. Formatting is everything. It's about looking professional. And making sure your work translates. Across the board. Though this article does mention OpenOffice can open those password-protected files. Oh, yeah, that's a neat trick. Pretty handy if you're dealing with, you know, sensitive stuff. It can be a lifesaver in certain situations. For sure. Okay, so we've talked features, security, community, and now compatibility. We've covered a lot of ground. It's time for the million-dollar question, the moment of truth. Which one wins? Ah, see, that's the beauty of this whole deep dive thing. There's no easy answer. Not exactly. It all boils down to what matters most to you. Okay, so, like, what are we talking about here? Well, on the surface, LibreOffice. It's looking like the more modern, the more feature-rich option. Mm. And that compatibility edge, that's huge. But OpenOffice, it's still a solid choice for certain needs, especially if you're working with older systems or you need that password-protected file access. So it's not about which one is better, it's about which one is right for you. Precisely. It's about aligning the tools with your own workflow, your preferences, even your values. Hold on, values. Now we're getting philosophical. It's about understanding the why behind the what. Okay, I'm listening. Sure, both projects are open source. Yeah. But they have different histories, different communities, different visions for the future of office software. So it's like they're more than just software, they're movements. It's like choosing between Android and iOS. You're either an Apple person or an Android person. They both do great things, but... They attract different types of users, you know? Okay, now you've got me thinking. So we're talking about more than just features and file types. More than just checkboxes, yeah. It's about my values. I like it. This is deep. It's about finding software that resonates with you, you know? Both LibreOffice and OpenOffice. They're both open source. We know that. Right. But they have different origins, different communities, different visions for the future. Okay, so how do I even begin to figure that out? There's no, like, values tab in the software? Uh-huh. No, there's no magic button for that. But think of it like this. Do you want to be part of a project that's all about pushing boundaries, rapid development? So, like, always innovating, the latest and greatest. Exactly. Or do you lean more towards stability, a proven track record? Sticking with what works, reliability. Exactly. It's like choosing a tribe. Okay. I'm intrigued. Tell me more about these tribes. Do you want to be part of a group that's constantly pushing the limits? Yeah. Or a group that values tradition, tried and true methods? So it's about more than just the software itself. It's about the community behind it. The philosophy driving it. Exactly. It's like early adopter versus playing it safe. Precisely. There's no right or wrong answer. It's about finding the community that feels like the right fit for you. Okay, so how do I do that? How do I figure out where I belong? Spend some time on their websites, read their blogs, delve into their forums. So like digital anthropology. I love that. See what people are talking about, what issues they're passionate about. You might be surprised by what you find. Exactly. You might even discover a whole community that shares your values, your vision for the future of tech. Wow, this has been eye-opening. Glad to hear it. We went from comparing features to like... Uncovering the soul of these office suites. It's about empowering you to make the right choice. Who knew choosing free software could be so profound? Because the best software, it's not just about functionality. It's about finding the tools that resonate with you on a deeper level. And on that note, that wraps up our deep dive into the world of LibreOffice versus OpenOffice. We've given you the info, the insights, the questions to ask yourself. Now go forth and choose wisely.